her a big round of applause. Here she is, everybody, Saskia! So, back when I was in high school, about four months ago, <laughs> My teacher in biology used to tell me, if you ever forget the answer to an exam question, you can just write down the word protein, and chances are you'll be correct to some degree. <laughs> so when you ask people my age what they associate with proteins, chances are they won't think of these. What I have behind me here are two versions of the prion protein. So, to my right, to your left, um, is the normal form of the protein. So, you'll notice it has this little swirly shape in red, the alpha helix, whereas the abnormal form on the, right hand, uh, on the left hand side, for, you, for me at least, <laughs> has this thing we call a beta pleated sheet. Now, this difference may not seem really significant. We all have the normal form of the protein, but what happens when the normal form changes shape is significant because an abnormal prion protein, or what we call a misshapen prion, causes diseases. These diseases are known as transmissible spongiform encephalopathies. Say that ten times fast. <laughs> So, the problem we have with prions is because they are not a pathogen that involves DNA or RNA, these little guys are immune to our immune system. So, what happens is that they have the unfortunate tendency to change the shape of normal prion proteins, and so we get clusters. Now, a single misshapen prion on its own can't do a whole lot of damage, but it's when we see clusters of them that we start to get this spongiform tissue. So, you've probably all heard about at least one prion disease. If you're a hunter, you'll have heard of chronic wasting disease. This is a prion disease that infects the deer family. So you'll see it in deer, moose, elk, caribou, those kinds of animals. Now, it's rather difficult to recognize if a deer has chronic wasting disease because unfortunately, the symptoms are very, very, very similar to a lot of other diseases. So symptoms might include strange posture. The deer, we see it here, it's very skinny, so they lose a lot of weight. It's a degenerative disease, so they'll lose control at some point over their motor functions, they're less aware of their surroundings, they lose their fear of humans. So, you might want to stay away from an infected deer. So, there are plenty of alliances. If you're a hunter, you might have heard to watch for signs of chronic wasting. Now, the most prominent prion disease You've definitely all heard of this one, Mad Cow. So I was going to call my talk Apocalypse Cow, but I wasn't sure how many of you would have gotten the joke, so I did not do that. <laughs> so the symptoms of Mad Cow disease, or you'll sometimes hear of it as uh, bovine spongiform encephalopathy, are rather similar to that of chronic wasting. So you'll see here this cow is just lying on the ground, and you'll notice it has by the side of its legs are these scuff marks. So this cow is physically incapable of getting up because its nervous system has degenerated to the point where it has no more control over its motor functions. So, mad cow, as is chronic wasting, both of these are fatal. So they are degenerative to the point that at some point the animal just physically cannot function anymore and they die. Now, the fun thing is, these don't just occur in humans. I mean, we get these in animals, and so mad cow and chronic wasting only occur within cows and deer, respectively. But we do get a form of prion disease in humans, namely Creutzfeldt-Jakob. 
which is, again, degenerative. And there is a form of this variant Creutzfeldt-Jakob disease, which is directly associated with the consumption of beef that has been contaminated by prions. So you'll see here, this is a very um, interesting graphic. So these are three pictures of the same person's brain taken a few months apart. So the first image, A, was taken a few months after diagnosis, then B, again, two or three months later, and C was taken two or three months after B was taken. So we see here it's a degenerative disease, and I like to think of these sort of prion-infected brains as looking a bit like walnuts. Maybe that's just me, but I like to think of them as these little walnuts. And so, as we see here again, it's degenerative. And do you want the good news or the bad news? Both? Okay, let's start with the good news. The good news is that diseases in humans, such as Creutzfeldt-Jakob, are exceedingly rare. So for this one specifically, your odds are quite literally one in a million. So, chances are none of us are gonna get one. There are several ways in which they can be transmitted. Firstly, most commonly, they aren't transmitted at all, and they're what we call sporadic cases, so they just show up. We might also occasionally, these account for about 15% of all cases, get an inherited version of Creutzfeldt-Jakob. And then, this is the rarest, and in my opinion, scariest of them all. You can also get it through contaminated medical equipment. So, for example, if you're having brain surgery and your surgeon forgets to clean the tools. So, hopefully that's not going to happen. <laughs> um, so, but as I mentioned, it is exceedingly rare. So, chances are we're not going to end up with it. But if you do wind up with Creutzfeldt-Jakob, it is the last thing you will ever do. <laughs> yep, it's that bad. Usually, you're dead within a year, sometimes shorter, sometimes a little longer. And the most common causes of death aren't, in that sense, brain death, but you see degeneration of neural function to the point where your heart stops, or you stop breathing. Or, alternatively, you could die from pneumonia, but maybe that's just because your immune system wasn't so great in the first place. So, as it stands, these diseases, as fascinating as they are, are so uncommon that I would just leave you with these words. Try not to get bent out of shape over them. Thank you.